It is now time for a member statement, and I recognize the member from York South Weston. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Yesterday morning, I received a heartening letter from Brody Rodriguez, the widow of BSW frontline, uh, frontline hero, Leonard Rodriguez. Leonard was a resident of York South Weston and passed away on May 6 after 30 years of service to our community's most vulnerable population. Mr. Rodriguez was not provided with the necessary PPE to perform his job safely and contracted COVID-19. As Leonard's situation worsens, Doherty tried to get him medical treatment only to encounter resistance at every turn. This is a stressful time for Doherty and her family. While they cope with the loss of their loved one, they worry that other families may encounter similar situations. Doherty's voice deserves to be heard. She wants to know if the neglect experienced by her husband was part of a pattern of racial discrimination, but the data does not exist. Mr. Speaker, Doherty has asked that I continue to shine a spotlight on the need for race-based data collection in Ontario's healthcare system. She is no longer once to see us cover our eyes to racial bias. To quote Mariga, Mrs. Rodriguez's director, quote, just because an institution has a system in place to treat all people fairly and equitably, it does not mean it's been put into practice. With all they have gone through, I urge this House to honour her request and work towards the necessary reforms to bring real systemic change to our province. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I remind the members that we are in member statements and ask them to keep their private volume of their private conversations to a minimum so as to allow the member who has the floor to make their presentation and allow the speaker to hear them. Member statements. The member for Oakville, North Burlington. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic in Ontario has required us to alter how we work and shop how we see family and friends, and how we enjoy recreation and entertainment, and importantly, how we take part in acts of worship in our communities. For those of us who attend service, the restrictions of the pandemic have been very dramatic. In my community of Oakville, North Burlington, I have spoken to many faith leaders about this. They know the government had to take strong measures to restrict public gatherings, but want to know when our churches, mosques, temples, and other religious buildings can safely reopen. Services with worshippers who gather in cars are now permitted, but it's only a partial step. This is why we are holding a virtual meeting tomorrow with religious leaders led by the Minister of Labour to consult about the reopening of religious institutions. We will work together to ensure reopening can be done safely and that health guidelines can be followed to protect people particularly the elderly and the vulnerable. We know that religious services are important to so many, and we are thankful that our religious leaders and people across Ontario have been praying for this pandemic to end. We must work together, consult, and listen so that our houses of worship can safely reopen. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Toronto St. Paul's. Say her name. I stand by the family of Regis korczynski paquette and call on this government to conduct a public, independent investigation into her death. People are tired of this government's refusal to do their work to address anti-Black and anti-Indigenous racism. So imagine our disappointment and hurt when this Premier boldly claims that systemic racism does not exist here in Ontario. Here are some facts. Between 2013 and 2017, black folks were 20 times more likely than whites to be fatally shot and killed by Toronto police. Black and racialized Ontarians make up the majority of essential workers who have died due to COVID-19 and due to this government's lack of providing PPE. And in Ontario, black students and their families deal with the trauma of anti-black racism in their schools every single day. This is the province we're living in not your imaginary Ontario. When you deny that systemic racism exists in Ontario, in Canada at that, you deny that systemic change is needed right here and now. If we're going to truly address how colonization and white supremacy have impacted the lives of black and indigenous people right here in Canada, 
This government must admit and do your work. Stop erasing our lived experience. The NDP Black Caucus and the official opposition will continue to advocate until all institutions that are meant to serve and protect do so for all Ontarians, and that includes Black Ontarians, because Black lives matter. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Don Valley North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. At a time when bad news is making headlines since the beginning of the pandemic, I want to share some good news in this house. The fantastic people in my writing of Don Valley Notes, including many generous Chinese and Asian Canadians, are working tirelessly to help others. They donate tens of thousands of PPEs to support our frontline healthcare heroes at the North Shore General Hospital and our local long-term care homes. Fresh meals and juice bottles are delivered to nurses and doctors, thanks to our fabulous local restaurant owners. Our youth are also involved very actively. Some high school students donate from their own pockets to buy PPEs, while others prepared homemade meals for the hospital health, health works uh, healthcare workers. Many senior residents in the, living in the high rise apartment receive donated face masks to protect them. The bread program under the leadership of Teddy Lama forced food drivers with the kind support of, gross, of local grocer to help feed families in need. On behalf of the community of Don Valley North, I commend them all for their extraordinary efforts and extend them our deepest gratitude. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> member Statements, the member for London North Centre. Thank you, Speaker. It's an honour to stand in this house today to recognise Pride Month. The need to end homophobia, transphobia, transmisogyny, and other forms of bigotry and discrimination is as important as ever. The Ontario NDP has a long history of fighting alongside the LGBTQ community. We have achieved equal parenting rights, a province-wide ban on conversion therapy, as well as ensuring protections for trans and gender diverse people are reflected in the Ontario Human Rights Code. I am glad that people across Ontario spoke up about the repeal of the 2015 Health and Phys Ed curriculum, what some people refer to as the Sex Ed curriculum. We now have a curriculum which includes LGBTQ families and individuals so students see themselves reflected in their education. Delaying gender expression until grade eight is a huge mistake, but I'm glad we are still not using the anachronistic 1998 version. As true progressives, the NDP realizes much work needs to be done. LGBTQ folks face challenges accessing health care that is affirming, friendly, and competent. Too many LGBTQ seniors enter long-term care environments where they're forced back into the closet. It's unfair that these champions of human rights and human dignity encounter living situations where they don't feel safe to be their authentic selves. Other NDP measures to support LGBTQ folks include Pharmacare for All, access to PrEP, and gender-affirming transition medication and therapies. Pride will be very different this year, and I commend queer events, regional HIV AIDS connection, PFLAG chapters, QP Ontario, Glad Day, and the 519 for reaching out virtually to support the community at this time. We look forward to celebrating Pride in person in years to come. Happy Pride, everyone. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Simcoe Gray. Thank you, Speaker. I rise today to acknowledge the efforts of an enterprising entrepreneur in my riding who's working hard to build his skydiving business and help alleviate the, or revitalize the tourism industry, which is so important to the economic well-being of Wasaga Beach. Leslie Farkas wants to establish a landing zone at Wasaga Beach Provincial Park for occasional use during special events like Canada Day or Simcoe Day. I understand that after several years of rejecting Mr. Farkas's requests for permission to use a small portion of the beachfront for periodic landings, the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry is now considering his request, and I commend them for that. Skydiving is a safe, highly regulated and licensed activity. 
It's a popular and fast-growing sport that has the potential to help breathe new life and vitality into the Wasaga Beach community and economy. Supporting outdoor recreation opportunities is a key opportunity of MR, MNRF's mandate. I would hope, as Ontario focuses on job creation and opportunities for economic growth, that the government will remove the ill-conceived and counterproductive red tape that has stopped Mr. Farkas from realizing his vision. I look forward to the day that, when the beach returns and it's safe to do so, a large Canadian flag is allowed to drop from the sky for a celebration on the beachfront. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member statements. The member for Stormont, Dundas, South Dundee. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, I rise today to remember a friend and a true community champion. Floyd Dingwall owned and operated a successful dairy farm with his brother in Berwick, North Stormont Township. Farming was, a tough work, was tough work, but Floyd always made time for significant contributions to his hometown of Berwick and surrounding area. Through the local agricultural groups, he shared his herdsmanship and cropping experience with others. Floyd was named Jersey Canada's 1985 Master Breeder, judging countless shows, which eventually led him to England, where he met Queen Elizabeth and toured her Jersey cow farm. In 2002, he was awarded the Ontario Agricultural Service Diploma, and Jersey Canada's made him an honorary lifetime member in 2011. Floyd served with the Berwick Township Council as councillor and mayor, and in 1995, he was awarded a Stormont Dundas in Glengarry and the first deputy mayor of the newly amalgamated North Stormont. He became especially interested in conservation issues, becoming a member of the South Nation Conservation Authority and for 18 years, including three years as chair. For the first time in the board and, his work, and for his work to develop the popular Macintosh Park in Berwick, South Nation awarded Floyd the fir its first Lifetime Achievement Award in 2012. For all his, his contribution to the community of North Starmont, he humbly complied in the Chesterville Record article that he benefited in return because of all the organizations that educated himself. On behalf of his constituents, I offer my condolences to his wife, Esther, and his family. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Brampton East. Thank you, Speaker. I can't breathe. These are the last words said by George, For George Floyd before he was murdered by the police. And now people are in the streets once again protesting against systemic anti-black racism and police brutality. Some Canadians, including our Premier, look to America and say, at least that's not us. In Canada, we're different. To those folks, to the Premier, I say, Canada, Ontario, this very house that we stand in here today is built upon systemic racism. It is built upon a history of the oppression of black and brown people, of the enslavement of black people, of the genocide of indigenous people. And then instead of acknowledging this deep history of injustice that exists here, our premier denies it. And worse, he guts the institutions that are meant to fight racism and inequity by slashing the anti-racism directorate and the public services that we rely on. So today, I ask all of you in this House, let's do more than call for peace. Let's call for justice. Let's fully investigate all police killings. Let's end the systemic discrimination of black students in our schools. Let's invest in our communities and the services that help to end inequity. We need justice. And I promise you, we are not going to stop fighting for justice until we get it. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Willowdale. Thank you, Speaker. Over the past weeks, I, like my colleagues on all sides of the House, have recognized many of the everyday heroes who have risen to meet the challenges we face in our communities. This morning, I'd like to take a moment to recognize the work of religious leaders and congregations in my community and across this great province. Willowdale is one of the most diverse communities in our country, and it's no surprise that our neighborhood is home to synagogues, mosques, churches, and temples. Some congregations number in the dozens and others in the thousands, with services in English, Mandarin, Cantonese, Farsi, Korean, Russian, and Tagalog. 
The last few months have been difficult for people in our faith communities. Gathering to worship for fellowship are keystones in the lives of many. And although we can't gather in person at the moment, the essential work our religious leaders and their congregations do have continued throughout the pandemic. Over the last few months, I have attended several virtual services and seen firsthand how Willowdalers have come together to support one another and serve the community, like Pastor Paul and the team at Willowdale Community Christian Assembly, who have started the Kindness Project to deliver groceries and supplies to seniors and people in need. Many are also preparing for the new normal, like Rabbi Grover, who's been working tirelessly with his team, including doctors in their congregation, to prepare Beth Tikva for in-person services. Or Pastor Sean of Faith Church and Pastor Bruce at Willowdale Baptist, who have been working together with other faith leaders to develop best practices for regathering. And many have spoken directly with the Minister of Labour as part of his consultations in developing guidelines for religious gatherings. Places of worship and our faith communities are essential, and the work that priests, rabbis, uh, imams, pastors, Punjari staff and volunteers do is vital to so many communities across the province. Thank you for your hard work, for your sacrifice in staying home and keeping our neighbours safe. Thank you for your faith, your prayers and love. God bless. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Brantford, Brant. Thank you, Speaker. During the past few months, COVID-19 has certainly challenged us all. Whether you live in Toronto, Timmins, Windsor, or my riding of Brantford Brant, we've seen some amazing work done by our local businesses to help combat this horrendous virus. The Ontario spirit has never been stronger. I want to acknowledge and say thanks to a couple of businesses in Brantford Brant who exemplify the Ontario spirit. Keep Right Refrigeration has been operating in Brant Brantford for over 75 years, employing hundreds within the community. They are a leading North American manufacturer of commercial refrigeration products. Speaker recently, led by their employees, KeepRight donated $10,000 to our local food bank. I want to say thank you and your amazing employees for all that you do. Another business in Brantford brand I would like to recognize is Apotex. At the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, Apotex Pharmachem, Canada's largest producer of active pharmaceutical ingredients retooled part of its Brantford facility to produce high-in-demand hand sanitizer. Employees at the Spalding Drive facility produced an initial run of 500 one-liter bottles of sanitizer that were donated for distribution among local agencies and healthcare facilities. As the need for hand sanitizer skyrocketed during the pandemic, dozens of Apotex employees collaborated to get production of the germ-killing liquid ramped up as quickly as possible. From the bottom of my heart, I want to say thank you to Apotex and your employees for stepping up and showing us what the Ontario spirit truly looks like. Thank you, Speaker. Those are member statements for this morning, and the Solicitor General.